now because mm. um you you say in this book that it's, it's a way of setting the record straight mm. what needed to be set straight well i think you know um when john and i and george ringer worked together we thought of ourselves as very equal uh, that was the great thing in mm. the group if ringer didn't like a song he vetoed it <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you know, and he would just say, I don't like it, and we just wouldn't do it. Everyone was... So, that's how it was when we were working. Then when we split up, uh, it became more of a concentration, perhaps, on Lennon McCartney as being the writers in it. Uh, and then, obviously, when John's tragic death, it became very much naturally centred on John as mm. the sort of um, spirit behind the Beatles, which, you know, in many ways is quite right. But I think, unfortunately, I think some people tended to overdo that mm. and assume he was the only thing in the Beatles mm. in many ways, you know. Uh, well, I think for wit, uh, uh, he and Ringo were probably sort of the two wittiest, you know. Um, so I think really that it, it was a question of me thinking, well, I'd better stick it down now before the memory goes completely, which is going fast, you know, even as we speak it's ebbing away. Um, <laughs> And I'd better get with someone I know and can trust, like Barry Miles, um, who wrote the book, to actually just put forward my side of things, you know. Because it's the kind of thing that was starting to happen was in, uh, George Martin wrote a book called The Summer of Love, and he asked me to proofread it just to see if his memory was the same as mine. And he got to a song called Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, and he said, well, this was John's song completely. John wrote this, very typical of John, da 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 so I had to ring him up. I said, George, I said, no, it was John and I. I said, uh, we sat down. I contributed half of the song. I remember clearly arriving at John's place. It's in the book here, where he, he had this little drawing that Julie and his son had done. And across the top of it, in this very naive children's writing, was Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. John said, what about that for a title? Huh? I said, fantastic. He said, well, come on, let's go upstairs and write it. Which we did. <laughs> um, Just like that. Just like that. Well, I mean, that was one of the beautiful things about our relationship. We hardly ever took more than three hours over a song. Really? And I don't, I don't remember ever having a dry session. The nearest it came was a song that ultimately was called Drive My Car. Yes. That I brought. Norwegian Wood, that was it. Was that the LP? Pardon? Norwegian Wood, the LP? Yeah. I think I don't, it was. I'm, I'm, trying, trying, I'm, trying, to I'm trying to prove it. I remember that. I, I, I can't remember that. I was talking about the memory. There, yeah. here we have yeah. But um, things like that where, where it, it's almost a better story that John just wrote Lucy in the Sky of Diamonds himself, mm. that, that it's attributed to LSD, etc., etc., all the little legends that have grown up about it. But unfortunately, it's just not true, mm. you know, that I was there and we had a great session, but we, we loved the subject matter. It wasn't about LSD, because otherwise it would have been called Litzwood, because the initials aren't LSD, Lucy in the sky oh, with yes. diamonds is more like, yes. you know. But it was made up as were the sort of Paul is dead rumours. All these, the climate, as you remember, was sort of a bit crazy anyway. And uh, once an American DJ got hold of this stuff. So I think with all these distortions that were beginning to happen, there's a kind of sort of revisionism was starting, I sensed. And I thought, well, look, I don't want to kind of put John down at all. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm his biggest fan. I'm the last person to do that because I really feel very privileged and loved every second that we had together. I mean, well, let's face it, you know, Lennon McCartney, to be McCartney in the Lennon McCartney songwriting partnership was fantastic, mm -hmm. you know, they say. But um, I thought it was time to set one or two little things straight, like that Lucy in the Sky thing. I said, okay, I arrived there. John would then say, picture yourself because it was very, very John opening that, because it's very Lewis Carroll. Yes. Picture yourself. Yes. Uh, John, uh, John and I both loved Alice. So we, it was kind of our starting point, rather than LSD. Yes. It was more Alice in Wonderland. Yes. Yeah. So we went through it. I, I came out with newspaper taxis. He'd, he'd parry with, uh, you know, go with a looking glass eyes. I'd come out back with kaleidoscope or whatever this. Uh, cellophane, it's always been a favorite word of mine, that cellophane. But, so, so that was basically the idea. I thought, well, whether people believe me or the revisionism, it doesn't really matter to me, but I, I think I ought to get it down. You're talking about, about we've got a, a song here from the very early days, mm. uh, which is From Me to You. I mean, was that written in the, in the same sort of way that you describe? A sort of a, yes. How, how, what was the genesis of that song? Yes, it would. Um, in the early days, John and I would literally take our two guitars and sit wherever we were. I seem to remember a bit of this was done on a tour coach. Um, 
in a hotel room, often on the twin beds, with John just sitting on one of them, me on the other, and we'd be the afternoon when we'd done our sound check or whatever, we looked at the hall and we had to, from now till the evening. Uh, and rather than go to the, the flicks or something, we would we'd sit down with him and let's write a song. And we'd just trade off each other. And it was it was very magical because me being left handed, I was like a mirror version of him. He could sure. look at my guitar, I could look at his, and it was like looking in a mirror in many ways. It's quite strange actually. Um, but we could play off each other and we knew each other so well having come up in Liverpool together, started writing songs, having come through the whole Beatle thing together. And we could read each other and we, we knew what each other was sort of going to think. Um, well with From Me To You, we'd had a lot of these I love you, P.S. I love you, she loves you, please please me. We we put a lot of that in it. So this was going to get all the eyes and me's all in one thing. From me to you, very, um, which is a little kind of formula we were using. The pivotal thing I think about it was when we got to the middle. We always called them middle eights, by the way, even when we were 16 bars or 32 or just three. They were middle eights to us because we'd heard musicians saying it was the middle eight, and we didn't realise it was eight bars. It just sounded like a great catchphrase to us. So when we reached the middle eight. Um, it went to a different chord than one we'd used before. It was slightly more sophisticated. And I always remember that moment in my own personal memory as being, wow, we've, we're really developing now. We're moving away from the three chord songs. There's something more sophisticated about this. All right. Well, then let's hear that and then follow it with, I think, one of the greatest songs ever, pop song ever written, which, which you wrote. You want to do more. I, I like doing it so much. Mm. Um, but that's everybody's favourite song, most people's favourite. And uh, is it yours? Well, it's done amazingly well. I, I do love it. I, I think the thing for me that I love about it was that I dreamed it. 